get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Hello, BYWG Tribe. This is Dr. Noah. Here is a quick peek at our supplement, product, and book of the month for May 2020. At the end of the podcast, I'll spend a few minutes going into further detail, so we encourage you to listen to the end. The supplement of the month for May is our Deep Sleep Assist. The 10% discount code for the month of May is SLEEP10. That's all lowercase. It's case-sensitive. It's S-L-E-E-P-10. Our book of the month is High Fiber Keto a 22-day science-based plan to fix your metabolism, lose weight, and balance your hormones. Our product, Company of the Month, is Pretty Frank, formerly called Primal Pit Paste. 100% natural ingredients, zero cosmetic BS. All the links, discount codes, and special offers for the product, supplement, and book will be listed in the show notes and iTunes, posted on social media, in our weekly newsletter, and on our website at www.beyondyourwildestgenes.com at the Listen Now tab thanks for listening hello and welcome back to beyond your wild genes podcast a mutual friend of ours dr kellyanne petrucci introduced us how are you today deborah so great to be here thanks for inviting me i'm just very excited to share with you and your listeners today and so grateful to kellyanne for introducing us yeah me me too so let me just run through your bio and then we'll get started with the questions so deborah is the founder and ceo of the international chronic pain institute she is an internationally renowned speaker and energy healer who specializes in helping men and women to rapidly release release the hidden cause of chronic pain depression anxiety boy is that important (laughs) right now trauma (laughs) battle with weight binge eating burnout and other chronic conditions since recovering from her own health hell deborah has personally helped tens of thousands in 150 countries to remove pain restore their energy and get their lives back on track she's the amazon number one best-selling author of why do i still hurt has earned degrees and certifications in psychology, hypnotherapy, chemical dependence counseling, and 30 plus years practicing and teaching the art of meditation. Is a nationally recognized glass artist. She's a former professional modern dancer and a certified yoga instructor and creator of the Pain Free Living Program, providing rapid relief for chronic conditions. Whoa, that's a great bio. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's been a wild ride, I will say. <laughs> So, let's, so why don't you tell us a little bit about Ride, a little bit of a Cliff Notes version of how you ended yeah. up where you are today. Yeah, no, it was not something I planned, I'll tell you that. I'll take you back to the really pivotal moment. It was many years ago, over 30 years ago now, and I had a great life. I had a gorgeous home in Scottsdale, a handsome husband, a mm-hmm. uh, shiny new BMW in the garage, a career, money in the bank. And I woke up one Monday morning when I was just supposed to be getting up and getting dressed and going to work. And I couldn't get off the floor of my big, beautiful walk-in closet. And I couldn't stop crying and I could not get dressed. And I was in pain from head to toe. Nobody but me knew it because I was so good at hiding it. And that day I was out of the willpower to fake it one more day and pretend like everything was fine. And I, um, man, I was really, I, I was literally had hit bottom. And so I, that day, which felt like the worst day of my life, I screamed out at the universe and I said, you know, if there's anything out there, anybody out there, like, help me, I need help. And very un- it was very unusual thing that happened because uh, within seconds, I felt calm. And I got the courage to, and I stopped crying. And I stood up and I went into the other room and had the courage to pick up the phone and call a professional and ask for help and admit that I was out of ideas. Now, this was not like me. I was a very much, uh, I've got this kind of girl. Like, I got it. You know, I'll take care of it. But that day, I just, I, I couldn't. And, you know, my pain didn't make any sense. I had gone to doctors, but nothing, nothing was showing up on medical tests. And I had mystery aches and pains in my joints and muscles. My hair was falling out. I had ulcers. Um, they did know that, but everything they were giving me to treat these things, I had a low thyroid and ulcer, and, but nothing was helping me, nothing that they gave me. So I wasn't responding. And 
that was perplexing the doctors. And they finally said, well, we don't even know how to help you. Um, I couldn't sleep at night. I used to drink wine until I passed out. It was the only way I could get any sleep. And I took sedatives because all during the day I was a nervous wreck worrying about this and trying to pretend like everything was fine. And I wasn't telling anyone. And so I was depressed. I was anxious all the time. And um, I just reached that critical mass that day. And it began a journey for me that has literally led me here today to be with you. It was a journey I was not expecting. I was not wishing for but it really became the doorway to the rest of my life and really became, the, as I look back now, the best day of my life because I finally became teachable and open and started exploring and getting the help that I needed. I, 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 I think that acknowledgement of being teachable is really important, right? Because a lot of times we think we know everything or we've tried everything, and I'm sure – in the yep. course of your learning and now you're educating and helping people, you see people every day uh, that have yeah. seemingly tried everything and just can't get rid of their pain or their suffering. Um, what do you what do you say to that? Yeah, it's interesting. No, I, I would bet that almost everyone says to me, Deborah, I've tried everything. I hear those words constantly. And it feels like that, okay? I know it feels like that, but that is not accurate. We have more information now coming in at us at cyber speed than we can handle. New discoveries are made every day. I know the method of healing that I provide was not even available back then. So we, there are, there's always something new you haven't tried, but people get discouraged. And they're a, really what I've discovered is that underneath the is a fear that they're going to try one more thing and it's not going to work. And then they're going to feel stupid. They're going to feel like they wasted their time, energy and money and that there's that there's something wrong with them, that they're somehow damaged or there's something special about them, why they can't uh, heal and they feel stuck and blocked. And every day I have this conversation with people and um, really it's just a fear that Oh, my God, if I try this again, this new thing, what if it doesn't work for me? Now, are you – I'm trying to build a framework here. Are you working on people – is it just an energy basis? Is it a nutritional? Is it a psychological – like what, what, are, what are we talking about here? How are you different or what are you presenting to these people that are different than they've ever seen before and that, that gets the results that they need? Great question. I love it. So I, when I work with anyone, whether it's privately or in my groups, whether it's in person or virtually, and now I only work virtually for the past few years, completely virtually, um, there are three exact areas that I cover in order to find the real root of the problem. And that is the thinking mind, the emotions, and the energy field. And I help people heal from very severe chronic conditions without ever asking them to take a pill, a supplement, any kind of physical therapy, and I never give nutritional advice or ask them to give up any of the foods they love. So it's it's very unusual because most people with chronic pain or anxiety or depression, they're, you know, or any kind of um, chronic condition are typically told to first of all look at the nutrition and change their diet. And I I never even approach that. And um, I work helping people find how powerful they are and how powerful their thinking mind is, and no one's taught them how to use it properly. And then I also show them the power of emotions, and most people are terrified of their emotions or learned very early on to shut them down. And so the emotions are a massive contributor to pain and symptoms and anxiety and everything that people experience. So I show them how to lose the fear, overcome the fear of feeling feelings, and how to release them. And it can be learned very rapidly, and it, it's life-changing for people. So I help them find and release the damaging thoughts, find and release the damaging emotions, and then there's something very special that I do for everyone that I work with, and that's in the energy field that surrounds the body. And I can work, and I'm so sensitive that even at a distance, even without seeing the person, even without them being near me, 
I can set, I can scan the field, the biofield around the body, and I can find where there are disturbances. These are it's vibrational. I can actually feel it, and I can bring in a very high vi- high harmonious vibration that is what we call coherent. It's a coherent wave, coherent vibration, a harmonious vibration. And just like when you hear music, and some of it would make you run for the hills because it's so disturbing, and then other music is so calming and you just feel so immediately so much better, I bring in a vibration that calms people down, speeds up the healing process, and shifts and and helps them rapidly release the damaging thoughts, the damaging emotions, and even physical pain symptoms. Is what you're explaining uh, what you call high-speed healing? Is that what we're talking about now? Yes, it is. High-speed healing is my proprietary name of the energy healing method, Um, and it's based on all the principles of physics, which we know everything is energy, light, and information. And it's working in the biofield surrounding the body. And this is a, a term that was coined by the NIH, the National Institute of Health, back in 1992, where they discovered that we have a field classified by physics, a real thing. This is not something I made up. And the field is imprinting information that's invisible to the naked eye. But it's very, very real. And it's been recording everything that's happened to us since I believe before we're even born. And I know I know that because I've worked with so many people who relived the trauma of their birth experience when I worked with them and were able to release it. And the trauma from their birth experience was actually affecting their lives 30, 40, 50, 60 years later. <laughs> Is this the feel that's emanating from our heart? Because I know our heart uh, emanates a huge field, but we also also our brain too. Or is this some, a different field? We're talking about totally different. Well, the heart and the brain are one. Let's say one section uh, of the field that they've studied quite a bit. But the, there's actually, if you think of your, we think of our body as ending at the skin. Okay, we you know we can feel it, see it, touch it. But the fact is, is that the physical body is actually a field of vibration, a field of particles of light and information that's vibrational, and. Beyond the skin, the vibration gets more subtle, and you can't see it, but we are really one one big field that's way larger and way expanded beyond the edge of our skin, and it surrounds us in all directions, and um, everyone has this. Every living thing has a field that completely surrounds it. Plants have it. Animals have it. We have it. So it's much more than just the, they're talking about the electromagnetic field that the heart, um, that they can measure from the heart or the brain scans. But this is, this is uh, much greater. It's an entire field that goes around our entire body. And yes, it can also be measured. In fact, I've been in a research lab where they use really amazing equipment that comes out of Russia. And it, it shows on a computer the graph of the field that surrounds the body. And you can see it. You can see where there's disturbances in it. We can see where the changes occur. When, when I work on people, um, I think the first one to ever photograph the field was Dr. Valerie Hunt, the late Dr. Valerie Hunt, Ph.D. from UCLA. She was the first person to ever photograph it. She Somehow she was an amazing, had an amazing mind, and she figured out, using oscilloscopes and computers and films and camera, and she was able to photograph this field years ago in her lab. And today it's it's uh, much more common. Uh, I'm just trying to pull from all my different knowledge bases. This is And this is even different than, like, curly in photography, when we see those pictures of people with different colors coming off their body. Are we talking about even oh. something different than this? Well, curly in photography is a an, an more current name for um, – photographing the field. So yeah, we're on the same track here. Uh, the Kirli uh, photography and what they're using in thermography now uh, shows these are non-invasive methods of showing the field. There's equipment that comes out of Russia known as a GDV device, which is becoming more and more uh, known in certain laboratories here in the U.S. And it's, it's very sophisticated in measuring um, all of this. 
But there's a whole area of science now referred to as biofield science, very frontier science. And it's there's a ton of research out that is talking about the biofield, and that's kind of the new buzzword for um, the field. That's cool. It sounds a lot like quantum mechanics and quantum physics and all that, you know, in that more like quantum realm kind of stuff. Really, it is. It's totally relate. It's based on all the principles from physics. That's why it's not as common because most people are aware of uh, more principles from biology rather than physics. And it's a very different understanding about how health and healing works. When you look at the biofield and what we know, in fact, the the first um, physicists that were onto this called it an information field because they discovered that the field was literally informing the body and that the field is the key to both health or sickness because the information in the field, it starts in the field and it later shows up in the physical body. And this is what I have found again and again is and, and why it's so important to examine the thoughts and the emotions because thoughts and emotions are subtle energy and the subtle it starts in the subtle, invisible realm first, and then if it's repeated, 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 it shows up later in the physical body as a symptom. And we tend to think the body is the only place to look. But the field, we can catch it. This is why thermography and some of these other tests are so important, because, for example, we can find symptoms of real problems years and years before it would ever show up in the physical body. So this is the greatest, when you work energetically in the field, it's the greatest prevention ever. And the other beautiful thing is that if it has already shown up physically in the body, we can still release it from the body by working in the field. Deborah, is there one... Is there one large field and each human or each living thing has its own field within this larger field or am I off, am I off base on that? No, you're, you got it. You got it, my friend. So you're, this is a great question. We live in a, an entire ocean of energy and information and we're all swimming in it together. It's sometimes called the collective consciousness. Um, it's got different names, but we live in an ocean, a field that we're all interconnected with. And yes, the answer is absolutely yes. And then we have smaller groups of people and cities and places where we quote unquote resonate with, where we're a better vibrational match. It's why you naturally gravitate to certain people, certain places, certain events, certain activities, certain information, because you have a certain vibration. You literally have a signature sound that you may not be aware of, but you're sending out a neon sign and so is everyone else. And you'll be drawn to um, like vibration. And if you look around, that's why so many people in certain families are often alike. So many people in your city, your close friends, the, the, the places where you gravitate, like vibration does attract like, like vibration. You know, it, it, for, on the surface, this may look very, uh, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but even, yeah. even I'm a chiropractor and even yeah. in, in true chiropractic philosophy, originally yes. there's the universal intelligence, which is the big yes. field. And then everybody right. else has their innate intelligence. And this is the field that you're talking about individually. So, um, and, and I know in every other culture, there's, there's some form of what we're describing. It's just described in a different way using different terminology. It is, and I've always felt that the chiropractors were the first ones in a more to really bring this to the mainstream. I've always just so loved chiropractors for this reason. They get it. It is part of your learning and understanding of how health and healing works. And it's absolutely true. There's a universal intelligence, a divine mind sometimes it's referred to, the chi, the prana field that we're all in. It's got so many different names. But this is both ancient wisdom and new science. It's both. And I think finally we're living in a time that's very exciting because the ancient and the new are coming together. 
and discovering that they're saying the same thing in a different language. Yeah, I, I agree yeah. totally. So, uh, it can you can you run through an example of maybe a patient you had in in the thinking mind, the emo like just get, get yeah. kind of like uh, how this whole thing works or. Some sure. sort of example of what high-speed healing would, would look like in, in a typical patient or client of yours. Sure. So I'll give you a great example of someone who had terrible uh, – she, she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and she had pain head to toe, and particularly a lot of pain and numbness in her feet, and her hands would burn – and she had trouble sleeping as a result of all this and then was found, you know, she was chronically fatigued. So it kind of becomes a snowball effect, as I'm sure you've seen. And it was affecting her digestion, her elimination, her ability to go to work and earn money. So you see, it just becomes a big, complex problem. So I sat down uh, with her. And again, this was virtually. And first, we just had a simple conversation. Now, I don't always have a conversation with everyone. Sometimes uh, that's not available to me. So I'll go right into the uh, high-speed energy healing portion. But in this case, and, and I prefer, my preferred way is to always have a conversation first and then go into the energy healing. Because I like to empower people to learn and, and, and see their blind spots. So we started having this conversation. And I ask questions, and from the questions, I'm listening very deeply. And I discovered that this client of mine was very, very angry. She discovered someone that was working for her was stealing money from the cash register, but she never said anything about it. And so she was upset. She was worried. She didn't know how to replace the person. She was worried about her business, and she was having a lot of emotions connected to these thoughts. She was feeling angry, frustrated, afraid, worried, anxious. She didn't know what to do, so she was feeling out of control. All of these emotions and thoughts were getting stuffed and blocked and coming out sideways as symptoms. When I sat down with her, I helped her recognize that these emotions are energy, and energy always goes somewhere it's going to go out or, and be released or it's going to go in. And I helped her in that moment to allow the feelings. I, I taught her a technique that I teach everyone for, for their self-care, which is helping her feel the feelings, actually feel them and release them. And within seconds, people can release the tension, the stress, the anxiety, the emotional pain. It, it just leaves. And you see them taking a deep breath, which again, is so important. If you're not breathing deeply, you're not going to have good digestion. You're not going to have good sleep. You're not going to be um, able to make good decisions and think clearly. Your brain isn't even getting enough oxygen. So it, it just contributes to the whole problem. And then I work in her energy field by scanning the field and noticing where I feel disturbances and I bring in this harmonious high vibration. And Literally within less than an hour, she was completely pain-free, 100% pain-free. No fibromyalgia pain, no feet pain, no burning sensation, no pain in her chest. She had a lot of pain in her chest, which was coming from the emotions and the, the, the patterns of thinking. And she was just smiling from ear to ear and saying, Deborah, I can't even believe this. And this is what I go through every single day. Noah, I hear this every day. Deborah, I'm completely pain free. Now, I can do this for people individually and with groups. That's what's also quite astonishing is that people don't have to work with me one on one to get these results. But when I do work energetically, everyone gets individual results. And Many, many people, and, and this was shown in the science lab, that I'm getting a f measurable 51% reduction in all symptoms. We're talking physical and emotional, and a 51% increase in the person's energy. So they feel better, 
And what's really ironic is that the people we've measured in the energy lab, in the research labs, they all say, no, no, the measurements are wrong. I'm 99.9% uh, symptom free. So what we saw over the course of three days is that people's, the measurements actually go up over the course of three days, even from just one session. And so many people are just like the client I just described, and they often feel dramatically different right away in less than an hour, and then they continue to heal even as day one, two, and three continues on. It's, it's very different than what, we, what we're used to seeing with typical treatments. Now, what if, what if someone... I, I, I want to say that everybody's got some sort of pent up emotions that they haven't released, but they're not in, in pain uh, or, yeah. or chronic pain or, or, you know, like I'm right now, I have a little bit of hip pain, but I'm not in, in regular, uh, you know, constant pain is what's yeah. the benefit for the person who's just wants to be healthier or to want to have to make sure they don't have any blockages in their energy or they're or they're not yeah. storing ill memories from their childhood? Like, what, what, what does that person look like? Yeah, so this is a great question because there are a lot of advantages to helping someone who's really not in a lot of pain. They're not sick. They're not suffering. Um, one of the first things that happens is they will become aware if there are any suppressed or repressed emotions that they're storing up and aren't aware of, they'll just easily release and the same thing, I'm sure if there was some deep trauma, they would already have known about it. But in, if there if there isn't, they, it will come up and release. And But the greatest benefits for people who are not suffering if they're in good health is quite remarkable. What people tell me constantly is that they experience greater creativity. They all of a sudden discover ideas coming seemingly out of quote unquote nowhere. I have had people, Noah, go home after one session and and get a creative idea for an entirely new business. They get the product ideas, the names of the products, the description, all the information about it, and they just start like pouring out these ideas that turn into very successful businesses. I've had people get ideas for books and end up writing best-selling books. I've had people tell me they went home and had this urge out of nowhere to start painting. And they started an artistic hobby that led to sometimes just a beautiful hobby that they now thoroughly enjoy that they never thought they could do. But some of that, sometimes the artistic um, urge became literally an ability to sell artwork that, and they never, never even thought they were artists or had an artistic bone in their body. I've had people tell me they just feel their intuition for the first time. They actually sense their intu intuitive voice, their inner guidance, and they feel connected to it. I've had other people have very interesting, what I would call multi-dimensional experiences. And they experience life. They experience a connection to the cosmos. They, they recognize for the first time, or maybe they've known about this, but they've never had an, an experience of it, where they, they feel a connection to the cosmic, the galactic space, the earth, in a way that they've just never, they've never gone, had the experience of it. They've just, had thoughts about this, but they they describe it, and it is very hard to describe because it's more abstract. But they say, Deborah, I feel like I was a, an expanded energy field. I didn't even feel like I had a body. I felt like I was part of the universe. I heard sounds and vibration, and it, it's a very blissful experience. And many people experience the bliss state, which they talk about in the yogic traditions as being a real. Uh, state of being and I know you know I've been a meditator for 40 years so I'm able to tap into that bliss state pretty quickly and easily and I I found I'm able to accelerate that experience for people who never meditated never want to meditate but they experience that bliss body that bliss field 
just from the energy, high speed energy healing. So there's a, a an array of experiences people can have that it makes them more productive, more clear headed, um, more clear about making decisions, more present to their kids, their families, their loved ones, um, more creative, and definitely more resilient. You know, for times like we're in right now, you need to be clear headed. You need to make good decisions. You need to be resilient and just more present to everybody, including yourself. So it's it's very powerful for that. You know, I, I listen to you speak, and I, I can't help to think about Edgar Casey and Akashic Records when I when I hear you speak. Oh, yes. Oh boy. Well, again, Noah, see the Akashic Record is um, is the field, but that's a term very few people know about. And Edgar Casey was certainly very dialed into all this information. And one of the early, early people to start to really talk about the possibilities of all of this. Yes, yes. Now, yeah. let me be let me be perfectly honest. I am in a low energy state right now. I'm usually much, <laughs> much more energetic and much more upbeat. But this the whole situation yeah. with COVID nineteen, yeah. it's got me. I, you know, I came home. I was short with my kids. I was short with my yeah. wife. Um, uh, I'm anxious. I think it's a little bit of a of, of fear of the unknown of what's going to happen. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a small business owner. Um, what do you, what do you say? What are your thoughts or ideas on that? Because I know I'm not the only person out there thinking about oh. that right now. No, no, you're actually describing what everyone is collectively going through. And I think, first of all, it's and I've been spending day after day trying to uh, creating Facebook lives and interviews like this to try and help people release the fears and release the anxiety and get back to calm. And I keep saying, you know, I'm here to spread calm, not Corona. And it's it is it's we all feel out of control, you know, because we don't know the future. But here's the thing. Here's the truth. We never know the future. We just think we do. And Corona cor coronavirus, what it's done, COVID-19, is it's made people very aware that they cannot control the future. Now, this is something important uh, to recognize. There are certain things we can control, and there are a lot of things that we can never control. But the illusion and before COVID-19 was that we were in control. And so what it's doing collectively is it's bringing people literally home to the present moment. And the present moment is where all the power is. Because I don't know what's going to happen two minutes from now. I never did know. I can plan, but those plans may not, change, may not work out. So the best thing we can do is examine our thinking. And what I have found in every single case, if you look at when you feel the most anxious, when you feel afraid, when you feel out of control, if you examine your thoughts, what you'll find is you're telling yourself a scary story about something that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> now, the facts are that story is make-believe. You're making it up because you don't know what's going to happen. So if you're going to make up a future story, why not? start thinking about a positive ending, a positive story that works out, that makes you feel good, because that's just as unreal as the other story. But it will, it will calm you down. It will make you feel better. You'll have a possibility of a really exciting adventure. And to the excitement, think about it this way too, Noah. I mean, when you go to the movies or you watch Netflix – and you watch an action film, do you want to know how it turns out in the first five minutes of the, of the movie? No. Hell, hell no. Everybody's excited about the journey, the ups and the downs and the emotions, and the whole thing is actually why we love watching movies. Well, what if you start to think about what we're going through now in a different way? And instead of thinking about it in a fearful way, Think about it as the most exciting adventure that we're all going through together. You're not alone. There's a lot of people going through it that you know. 
and you can lean in and watch together and you can talk about it together and actually talk about how you're feeling and share different um, resources and just lean in and feel greater connection than ever before. So the corona is bringing connection. It's making us stay present and really focus on how do we stay calm. It's making us much more creative. And the next thing we must do is recognize that feelings are connected to thoughts. And so every thought you think is going to have an emotional reaction. So if your thoughts are, oh, my God, what if this happens? Oh, my God, what if it doesn't work out? Oh, my God, what if I never can earn a living again? Oh, my God, like if they're fear-based thoughts, you will find the emotion that's attached to them following right behind. And emotions are energy, and energy must release. It must go somewhere. There is nothing to fear about your feelings. And I really want to emphasize this. Even if you're having fearful thoughts, which is normal, and worry about the future and finance and everything that's uncertain, the feelings you're having are normal. And it's just energy. And you can allow them to come up and feel them. The problem arises when you try to stop them and you resist feeling them. And you try to suppress repress, deny, you eat ice cream over them, you drink booze over them, you take pills over them. When you try to escape and numb out, you're actually going to guarantee that those feelings will never release. They're going to grow bigger and bigger. And that's how I ended up on the floor of my closet because I never allowed myself to feel. So we have to learn to quiet down. And this is why... Being quarantined at home, we have an opportunity to learn some new skills and to practice them and to teach our kids. And that's that quiet time does not equal scary time. It's not fearful. We need quiet time. The world has gotten out of control with being too busy. We need time to breathe. We need time to be in nature. We need time to be with our families. We need time to prioritize our values and what's really important to us. We need quiet time to check in with ourselves, to even know how we're feeling and thinking and what's going on inside. These are positives, Noah, that this whole situation is bringing us. Uh, I, uh, I, feel be- <laughs> I feel better already, honestly. Oh, boy. Thank you. Yeah. It's normal. And that's the thing. Don't think it's abnormal. Everybody's feeling... Um, these emotions come up and then they're judging themselves for feeling the emotions. And that's the double whammy. You know, it's one thing to uh, have a reaction, an emotional reaction to what's going on. And then if you beat yourself up over it, that just makes it worse. So we have to put down the hammer, stop beating ourselves up for anything. These are times we've never been through before. We've never had a collective experience like this. Never. So we need to be gentle with ourselves more than ever. And you know what? We're in close quarters. It's very normal and natural. And we're going to see this if this if the quarantine continues, which is looking like it will. And they're closing schools and the kids are home and your spouse is home. You know, most people are not used to their spouse and their kids home all the time. So there's going to be moments where you snap, where you're not your highest best self, where you feel irritated or angry, and you're going to, look, it's going to happen. So stuffing is not the answer. We need a timeout. Everybody needs a timeout and a rule that we're just going to go to our rooms and we're going to turn on music or we're going to go take a walk or we're going to get on the treadmill or we're going to do some jumping jacks. We're going to do some deep breathing. We're going to do some high-speed energy healing. We're going to use our tools And we need to have a lot of tools in our toolbox now that we share with our families and our friends. And there's plenty of things online being offered for free now. I have all kinds of free resources. I mean, people just need to use the tools. The tools are the key, and they're everywhere now. And not beat ourselves up. Deborah, I have have three three more questions. Uh, Pretty straightforward. I want to make the assumption that people can learn the technique that you're describing. Is that, is that correct? 
It is. I've trained over 250 practitioners. Uh, I have a, a beautiful course that is life changing for people who are interested in learning this method. You can, you know, in my opinion, humble opinion, this method is designed for this day and age. We need a virtual method that gets results and that gets it fast. And we need a method that doesn't require analyzing and testing and um, taking, you know, lots of uh, having lots of visual or in-person experiences. And so this is the, the beauty of this is that people can learn to ha they should have it in their back pocket just for their families, just for their kids alone. I've seen more chil children respond really quickly because they're they don't have a lot of the belief systems in place where they're sitting there worried about, oh, well, am I going to look stupid if I do this? Or what's someone going to think of me? Or where's the data? <laughs> you know, Kids don't think like that. They just say, yeah, I, I'd like to try it. And they respond very, very rapidly. So if, if a parent has this in their back pocket, oh, my goodness, it's such a powerful tool. Tool. And then anybody in the health profession who's now not even able to go to their office and practice, this is the next level of healing available to the planet. And it can be learned. You will get results before you're halfway through my training program. You'll, all, you'll already see the results working on people. And I can pretty much guarantee that every practitioner will be able to do this. It's very exciting. And what's the best way for the audience to get in touch with you or your program, your book, like where, where is the, is it your website? What, what's the best place? Yeah, yes. If you go to the website, which is international CPI.com, then right away you'll see a place where you can download all my free gifts. There's a book for those of you that like to read. There is, um, uh, an MP3 masterclass for those of you that like, uh, a deeper dive into more information and you like to listen. And then there are three videos for those of you who like to binge watch uh, TV. There are three videos with practical tools for clearing the mental chatter, the emotions. And then there's one of me demonstrating the high speed energy healing for you. I give, I, I will take you through the experience and you'll get results just from the video alone. Um, so you can get all of that at internationalcpi.com. And you'll, you can also find the um, how to contact me via email on the site. You can find the information about becoming a practitioner and also my in-depth program, my advanced program, which is the Pain-Free Living Program. All of that is right there at that one address. Excellent. This, uh, this interview is extraordinarily timely, unbelievable. Um, fi final question I ask all my guests, Deborah, what's, what's your daily routine from, you know, getting up to the time you go to bed? Oh, interesting. So the first thing I do when I get up, um, I drink hot water with lemon. And while I'm doing that, I immediately get my mind in the right place by opening up one of my favorite books that for me is usually, um, some sort of spiritually inspiring written material that I may have read a thousand times, but that it just is a deep reminder of where I want to keep my focus. Um, and I, I go there right away and then I like to meditate and I find if I start my day with either meditation or yoga or both, which is my preference, my preference is both. I have an amazing day no matter what. And I'm calm even in the midst of challenges. Um, I really find I have to move my body. So if I meditate in the morning but don't have time for yoga, then I um, – actually, you know what I should tell you? I forgot to tell you this. Before I even get out of bed, I actually do stretches in bed to move my body, get my lymph system going, and um, do gentle stretching in bed before I ever get out of it. So I'm very physically – oriented and so um if i don't get the yoga in then later on in the day or in the evening i will make sure that i do physical exercise of some kind uh i just don't feel right when i'm not moving my body every day and you know i work i'm very very focused i'm one of those people who will sit down and i can work 12 hours straight which i don't recommend 
but I, I get so focused because I keep my routine. I, I've been doing this for years, and I'm able to just dial in. And people are always asking me, Deborah, how in the hell do you work so long and for so many hours a day and, and stay so focused? I just have trained my myself to, I mean, to me, six hours goes by in a blink of an eye, and I don't even look up, nothing. I don't feel... I'm not constantly thinking about food. I mean, I am just dialed into what I'm doing. Very present. Yes, any any <laughs> end of night routines? End of day routines? Um, you know, I I will admit I'm I don't always practice what I preach end of day because I think for the average person, the the normal person, you you've got to shut down the digital. Uh, apply the digital uh, technology at least two or three hours before bed and find something that's very, very relaxing to start calming down your nervous system. Again, this is where the high speed energy healing is so valuable. Breath work techniques. Uh, I teach quite a few things actually to help people calm down before bed. I mean, even before we had COVID-19, lots of people have, I think the number one thing people tell me is they have insomnia. Some people haven't slept in years. And that's because they don't have great daily habits or they're also eating too late uh, in the day before they go to sleep. So digestion's interfering. But the um, mind is the biggest problem. They have not released and gotten that mind to quiet down and the emotions as well. So get rid of the digital technology. Never, ever have it in the bedroom. Never have it turned on or even in the bedroom. Shut it all down everywhere in your home, especially that Wi-Fi. I don't even use Wi-Fi. I have no Wi-Fi going through my entire home. Um, turn it all off, get rid of it, put it in another room, and find something, whether it's music or breathing or cuddling with your partner or if you have animals, like find something that really helps you smile and calm down and it brings out the love. The love is the key to all of this, including healing viruses. I know that's a bold statement, but love is the grand healer. So if you're alone, if you're living alone, I live alone right now. So you can always think about someone or something that you love. That feeling, that vibration will start flowing through your nervous system and it will activate the parasympathetic, which will help you sleep better. It will give you the rest and digest that you need. And there's nothing more powerful you can do than connecting to the feeling of love. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way to uh, finish. Yeah, I, I plan on finishing this interview and then snuggling with my 10-year-old son. <laughs> that's I love that. Do. I love uh, that. I see his picture with you in, in yeah. my little circle yeah. here. It's so adorable. Yeah, that's that's the guy right there that I'll be snuggling with. So thank you very much, Deborah. I'll let you know when this is released. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, my God. Such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks. Be well. Yep. My name is Dr. Noah DeCoy, your co-host, and you are listening to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. If you like what you've heard today, please share this with your friends and encourage them to subscribe on iTunes. You can subscribe to our weekly email at www.beyondyourwildestgenes.com. And thank you. And as my oldest son, Hayden, says, be awesome and never unawesome. It's Dr. Noah, and I'm back. I suspect you loved listening to this week's podcast release. Our book of the month is High Fiber Keto, a 22-day science-based plan to fix your metabolism, lose weight, and balance your hormones by Naomi Wittell. You can listen to my interview with Naomi at the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast archives date April 20th, 2020, just a few weeks ago. The link to purchase will be in all our emails, social media, and in the show notes. Our product of the month is Pretty Frank, formerly called Primal Pit Paste. Pretty Frank is committed to making safe, high-quality, and earth-friendly products without compromise. Their line consists of deodorants, body care, oral care, and skin care products. One of their taglines is 100% natural ingredients, zero BS. No aluminum, no parabens, no harsh chemicals. 
Very timely, they just released a brand new hand purifier as well, scented with eucalyptus and lavender essential oils. Our supplement of the month is BYWG's Deep Sleep Assist. Deep Sleep Assist is a specialized combination of scientifically backed herbs, minerals, adaptogens, and amino acids that help you get to sleep, stay asleep, and achieve deeper levels of sleep so you wake rested and renewed. The May 4th podcast release will be a deeper dive into this unique effective sleep aid. The 10% discount code for the month of May is SLEEP10. That's lowercase S-L-E-E-P-10 whether you order online or pick up at the office. If you have any questions or comments, please never hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you for your time and be awesome and never unawesome.